Hey, welcome back to Advanced Mechanics. We're going to continue our examples using the Lagrangian. In this example, we have a hoop that is rotating about this axis here. Attached to the middle of the hoop is a string of no mass with a little bead right here. As the hoop spins, the string is going to be elevated upwards and the, math, the mass is going to be suspended somewhere right here and it's going to move in a circular path, but also be up at some specific height. The larger the frequency is, the angular speed here, the higher this mass will go. So we are going to be looking at how this frequency changes as well as this angle theta as well. And we wanna write our equations of motion for the speed right here. First thing we're going to do is write down some information. We need to first look at the angular speed, which we can write down as a generalized coordinate of phi dot. Now phi is going to be the rotating speed of the hoop. Phi is the angular displacement of the rotating hoop. And then phi dot would be the angular speed in accordance to the rotation right here. But there's also motion for this particle, not just going around like that, but going up and down as well. So we need to write down some information about that as well. And to do that, we're gonna first break down this R right here. R is gonna have two parts to it. It's gonna have a component going this way, which is going to be R sine theta. Over here, it's going to be the distance from here to here. We'll call that R cosine theta. There are the two speeds that we need to be aware of. And so one of those speeds is going to be this mass that's a distance this much away rotating about this axis right here. So how are we gonna determine that speed? We would say that speed, or the tangential speed in that direction, is going to equal phi times, or phi dot times r times sine theta because it's this far away not from the center right there. Sine, whoop, sine theta. And then the other speed is this mass not just rotating about the axis, but also this mass going up and down at some angle right there. So we'll call that velocity equaling theta dot times r. And in this case, it is a distance r, so we don't need to put a sine or cosine term there. So those are our two velocities. Is there anything else that we want to discuss before moving on? Let's say that this height right here at the bottom is going to be the minimum potential energy. So the potential energy there at the bottom is going to be zero. And that's gonna be important because we wanna find this height right here. And that'll tell us what the potential energy is. So let's start writing down our kinetic and potential energies first. The kinetic energy which we write down with the letter T when we're talking about Lagrangian mechanics, is going to be the velocity, the energy from the velocity of this and the energy of the velocity of that. So the first one's going to be one half little m uh, parentheses phi dot r sine theta squared, because kinetic energy is one half m v squared. Don't forget the square term. Uh, it's easy, I should just mention right now, to make little mistakes throughout this because uh, it sounds pretty simple, but you know it's easy to make mistakes as you go through here. So it just takes practice to do these. The other uh, energy is the energy for this velocity, which is going to be one half m theta dot r, and we're going to square that as well. And that looks right so far. So the next thing is our potential energy. The potential energy is going to be mg r, but it's this distance from here to here. So what is that distance? Well, the distance from the center to the bottom is r, and the distance from here to here is r sine theta. So you just take the difference of r minus r sine theta. And so we end up with the r getting pulled out, and we get 1 minus cosine theta. So this term right here is the height, okay? So now we have the potential and the uh, 
uh, kinetic energy, we can use our Lagrangian, which is the kinetic minus the potential energy, and that's equal to one half m parentheses phi dot squared r sine theta squared plus one half m phi uh, theta r squared. And finally, we have a minus sign here. So what I'll do is I'll just rearrange these two terms right here and we'll call it a plus sign. So this will be plus mgr cosine theta minus one. So there's our Lagrangian. And so from here, we can solve our uh, equations of motion. There are two different variables here. And I should say that this Lagrangian is dependent on four terms in total. The Lagrangian is going to depend on theta, theta dot, phi, and phi dot. So those are what's dependent on the Lagrangian. What I'm going to do is solve the equations of motions for theta and theta dot here. And then as an exercise, you should be able to do these using the same kind of strategy that I'm going to use to solve for thetas. What is the Lagrangian equation for theta, or the Euler-Lagrange equation? It is d dt of the, um, what is it? The partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot minus d, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian over theta and that's going to equal zero. So that's the Euler-Lagrange equation for this theta term here. Uh, just as a reminder, this term just means the force. This term right here means the momentum, and then the change in momentum over the change in time is a force. So you have a force subtracting a force. That's all that equation tells us, okay? Let's uh, start cleaning it up a little bit. So where can I do that? I'll do it up here. The first thing we're going to do is solve for dl d theta. dl d theta. What's that going to equal? We need to go to our Lagrangian right here, and we need to see where the theta terms are and then start solving. So we have to be careful here. This is theta. Aha, I already messed up here. This shouldn't be theta squared. There's, I kind of did it twice here. So we need to get rid of that square sign there, but it's still going to be there. So what we need to do is the m, the phi, and the r can come out of the part right here, and we're just going to be taking it with respect to theta. So this is really just sine squared, and this is a chain rule. So you bring the two to the front, leave the sine alone, and then take the derivative of the sine, which is going to be cosine. So we bring the two to the front, and then the two and the one half will cancel each other out. So we get m phi dot squared r squared sine theta cosine theta. That's the partial derivative of this term right here. Let's keep going. How about this next term here? So we're taking it with respect to theta. In this term, there is no theta, it's a theta dot. So this is a constant according to this, so gone. Over here, we can distribute the MGR into here and here as well. And so the MGR into the one is a constant that goes away. And we just take the derivative of cosine theta, which is negative sine theta. So I'm gonna make this a minus sign right here. This will become minus MGR sine theta. I believe that should be everything. Yeah, looks good. So there's that. We got this term of the Lagrangian done, but we still have this term right here. So let's do that. Let's start with dl over d theta dot, and that's equal to, so going back into this equation right here, 
we're taking it with respect to theta dot. Well, there is no theta dot here. This is a phi dot. So this term is zero. We have a theta dot here. Um, we're going to have to square both of these terms. Uh, the two with this term right here will become, uh, well, what's the derivative of all of this right here? This will just become m r squared because r is squared and then the theta squared we take the derivative of that is two theta dot and two theta dot times a half is just theta dot so we can get rid of the one half with that squared term when you take the derivative and finally over here well there is no theta dot in this term so that's it we have this and this but we need to take the time derivative of this term so let's take the time derivative of this so we are going to now take d dt of m r squared theta dot, and that's just going to equal m r squared theta double dot. All right, it's not so bad. And now we can set this into our Lagrangian equation. And what I'll do is I'm actually just going to bring this to the other side first. So we have d dt of the partial d theta dot is equal to the, the partial of just regular theta. And now we can do our substitution. So this term becomes that. And this term, and I guess I could put it in our pen here as well. So this term is over there. And this term is this right there. So let's plug it in. We have m r squared theta double dot is equal to m phi dot squared r squared sine of theta cosine of theta minus m g r sine of theta. Okay, so there it is in our Euler-Lagrange equation. And let's clean this up a little bit. We can get rid of the m's. So I'll use that my red color here. We'll get rid of these m's here. Because there's an m on each side there. We can divide out the r's from everything. So I'll divide it there. That's gone. And this one will become 1 over r. Because one of the r still remains. And so I'm just going to rewrite all of this as phi double dot is equal to, let's see here, there's a sine component here, there's a sine here, so I can factor the sine theta out, sine theta, and what we're left with is phi dot squared cosine theta minus g divided by little r here. And can we do anything else with this? Oh, wait a minute, look at this. The angular velocity, how fast is it spinning, is phi dot. So I'll just replace this with the angular velocity term. And we get that sine theta omega squared cosine theta minus g over r. And that is our equation of motion here. This is our equation of motion for theta dot. And then if you want to uh, find the angular position or the angular speed, this is a differential equation. You've got theta here and theta double dot, and you would have to solve the uh, differential equation. Is there anything else that's interesting about this? Let's say that this is the angular speed right here. Um, let's say that the angular speed wasn't changing. Let's say there was no acceleration going up or down here. It was just staying constant. How would uh, that, what would that mean? So if theta double dot was zero, if we say that theta double dot is zero, then this particle is either moving at some constant speed, but really it's just going to stay in its position right here. So if theta double dot is zero, then we are in what we call equilibrium position meaning that this thing isn't going to accelerate up or down. So what would happen in that situation? Um, we would say 
what color could I use? I'll use black. If we set this equal to zero, well, something interesting. The sine theta divides out, so that's good. Uh, and we're left with omega squared cosine theta minus g over r. And we could figure out, because this is zero, we have to call this minimum, or what could we call it, equilibrium, maybe? So this would be the theta at equilibrium, because there's no forces acting on it, at least along this direction here. What is theta equilibrium going to equal? Well, we bring the gr to the other side and solve for theta equilibrium. And that's just going to be, let's see here, it'll be the arc cosine of g divided by omega squared over r. Now this is interesting too, because omega squared over r, that's just the centripetal acceleration. So the equilibrium angle, so what angle this needs to be, is going to be equal to cosine of phi of g divided by the centripetal acceleration. And something that you wanna be careful about is this, this mass right here can only be at an angle of zero all the way to 180 degrees. So we would have to say that theta equilibrium is somewhere between zero degrees and uh, pi degrees, okay? So that's, that's the only constraint that we would have there. So this is how you would solve the, um, the ex angular acceleration along this path right here, the equations of motion uh, using the Lagrangian. So as practice now, what I would like you to do when you get the chance is to try the other equations of motions that are for this right here. So that would be uh, d over dt of the partial Lagrangian d phi dot is equal to, or I guess we'll just write it the proper way, minus dl over d phi, and all that equals zero. So there's your starting point right there. And then you just plug into your Lagrangian and see what your equations of motion will turn out to be. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. There's nothing more to it than that. So hopefully you got something from this one and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.